Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is I want to factor this, right? What that means is I want to write this as a product of two factors. And the product of two factors, in this case, since a trinomial is going to be a two binomials. Now, one thing I notice about this is they don't have any GCF. I can't factor out a GCF for this problem. So, what I'm going to do, so you remember, we can have this. I need to be able to find, to be able to get the factors of this, what I can do is I can create an X. All right? And the x is going to help me find the factors. Because right now, we know they don't have any common factors, right? We can look up here and say, there's nothing I can factor out. So what we're going to do, Isabelina, is we're going to use this kind of technique to help us find the factors. So what the technique says is to do a times c, and then put b on the bottom. So where a times, what does a, b, and c mean again? So remember, we're talking about quadratics. All quadratics can be written in the form of ay squared plus by plus c. All right? So therefore, you could say a, in this case, is the coefficient of your square term, which is 1, and c is negative 6. Well, and then negative 5 goes right here. Because remember, it's the two numbers that multiply to give you up top, or a times c up top, and then b on the bottom. I'm just right. All quadratics can be written in this form. This is what we call a quadratic. The definition of quadratic is it can be written in this form, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Okay, and that's what we have. We have real numbers as for a, b, and c up there. Okay. Huh? Y is representing a real number that we're going. Y is representing a number, but a, b, and c are representing real numbers in the problem. That's what the that's what the definition says. So therefore, what you're going to do, yes? Right. So what it says is, it says the value of b, right? Well, b in this case is negative 5. I'm not changing it, but this is the standard form of the equation. So it's plus b. Well, b is negative, though, right? So it's going to be represented as a minus 5, right? If b was negative, then it'd be, you could be plus minus 5. But we just write plus minus 5 as negative 5. Does that make sense? OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say what two numbers multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us negative 5. So how do we figure out what two numbers multiply to give us negative 6 but add to give us negative 5? To do that, we can factor negative 6. So what two numbers multiply to give us negative 6? You could do negative 6 times 1. 1 times, I'm sorry, negative 1 times 6. You could do negative 3 times 2. Negative 2 times 3. Is that every single possible combination that will multiply to give you negative 6? Is it? What is the absolute only combination out of these that if I change the multiplication problem with an addition is going to give me negative 5? Negative 6 and positive 1. So I do negative 6 and positive 1. Now let's write that in there as our binomials. So I have y and y, right? I know it has to be y and y because if I was going to do my FOIL technique, I'd know y times y gives me y squared. Then I just take my other two terms here and I have negative 6 plus 1. And I can always check my answer, right? Create your little box to multiply. Put one up top and put one on the bottom. To multiply this, you multiply the areas for the square. y times y, y squared. y times negative 6, negative 6y. Y times 1 is y. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. So we multiplied 1 times negative 6. Notice, what did we multiply to get this number? We multiplied our inner terms to give us that, right? Then what are we adding? We're trying to add to get negative 5. What are we adding up there? So our final answer is y squared minus 5y minus 6. Is that our original problem? Yes. So is this factored correctly? Yes. Our problem is now written as a product of its factors. There we go. Make sense a little bit? Guys, a lot of these you need practice, practice.